it's good karma. And I wanna thank you so much for joining us on today. Now listen, before we get started, you know the routine. Go grab those tablets, those iPads, or whatever you use to take notes because the information we will share today is going to be an asset to you as you develop and as you grow in your faith. And today, guess what? We're starting a new series entitled Only the Young. Yes, you heard it correctly, Only the Young. And it's all about encouraging you as a young person to recognize the unique opportunity you have at this stage of life uh, to take steps towards owning and growing in your faith. And so we're gonna dig into first and second Timothy a little bit and also Matthew the 11th chapter. So pay close attention as our ministry partner, Leslie comes and teaches us on this series, Only the Young. Agree or disagree? There's so much possibility, potential, and power at your fingertips when you are young. I mean, I agree. Just Google songs with the word young in the title and you'll find a ton of old people still trying to be young. Why? Because there's a power that only the young have. It might not always feel like this, but the truth is younger people are often some of the most influential people around. Just think about the power that only the young people in society have. Like speaking of music, teenagers and young adults influence what music and movies top the charts and win awards. On top of that, consider this, your generation spends up to $143 billion in a year, which means that you have a massive influence on what companies are creating, marketing, and selling as products. Also, it was people close to your age participating in sit-ins during the civil rights movement of the 1960s, and teenagers are advocating to end gun violence in schools today. Also, Louis Braille was 15 years old when he invented Braille, revolutionizing the way visually impaired people interact with the world. Okay, so you probably get the point. This phase of life you're in comes with endless possibilities. You have so much power to influence the way that the world works, to invent tools that make life better for other people, and to fight for change in the areas where you see injustice happening. That's a lot of power. And as Uncle Ben once told Peter Parker, and that's a Spider-Man reference in case you're lost, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. But come on, you already knew this, right? In fact, some of us feel it every day. You know deep down that being young gives you a ton of potential and lays out so many possibilities for you. You've heard for years that you can change the world, right? And that probably feels really, really hopeful and at the same time might feel like a lot of pressure. But either way, you can't deny that young people are powerful. All right, so we're gonna take a turn because I want you to think about your faith or about being a Jesus follower or believer, however you say that. Think about your faith. When it comes to faith, some of us are being underestimated. Like, isn't it true that sometimes faith doesn't feel as filled with power and possibility like all the other things your generation gets to be a part of? I mean, I listed out world-changing things that people your age have done throughout history, but when it comes to faith, sometimes it can feel like all you're being challenged to do is just show up to a service, just sing songs, hopefully on key, just talk to your friends for a few minutes, and then just repeat that same routine more often than not throughout the 52 weeks of the year. Yep, you check off all those boxes for one hour, one day a week, and that's what we call faith. I mean, is that really all there is to it? When it comes to the idea of church and what it means to live out a real faith, some of us feel like the low expectation to just show up is underestimating our potential. And yet others of us feel a different way. We don't feel underestimated. We feel overwhelmed by pressure when it comes to faith. Here's what I mean. Maybe the pressure to show up feels like a lot to you, right? You already have soccer practice and rehearsals and other things to do, and now you feel pressured to show up and you feel guilty when you can't be here. Or maybe you feel um, a lot of pressure to follow all the rules so that you don't mess up your Christian reputation. Or maybe you feel like being a Christian is actually a huge burden instead of something that brings you a ton of joy. 
Look, even if you're brand new to this whole church thing, you might notice pretty quickly that it's easy to feel one of these two ways, either underestimated or overwhelmed. When you're young, every other area of life can feel so full of possibility and power, but sometimes our idea of faith can feel so basic. It kind of feels like, this. You've seen one of these before, right? This is a bike pump with a pressure gauge built into it. So basically when you are pumping up a tire on a bike like this, there's a number, it's called the max PSI number, right? And I know it sounds really, really scientific, but basically it means the pressure per square inch. Scientific, but it's just a number that you aim for when you're adding air to the tire and you watch the pressure gauge go up. It's exactly the amount of air that the tire needs to work like it was created to work. See, when you're filling up the tire and the gauge shows you that you haven't reached the max PSI number, if you stop there, then the tire will be flat or soft and you won't get the most out of it. And if you push way past the max PSI number and add too much air pressure, then eventually the tire will explode. Like hopefully not when you're riding the bike, that would be catastrophic. I mean, you probably get the point, right? The same thing happens in our lives, especially when it comes to faith. At times, the pressure gauge connected to our lives shows that we could actually handle more to truly be at our best. Not more pressure, but more responsibility, more room to own our own faith, more help following Jesus every day. At other times, it feels like the gauge is way past our max PSI number. It feels like if we are given any more rules to follow or any more standards to have to live up to, we will eventually explode or at least we'll get so worn out by the pressure that it might not feel like faith is worth doing anymore, right? Is Christianity just supposed to be a life of pressure being put on us by other people? Or is it something that we can take ownership of, just like young people have done with so many other things throughout history that have wound up actually changing the world? Can faith be bigger and better than the basic version that we feel pressured to fit into? Well, there's one person in particular who lived a couple thousand years ago who could definitely relate to being a young person trying to figure out his own faith. This person's name was Timothy, and he was a leader in the early Christian church. He was a young guy, most likely younger than many of the other people who were following his lead. And we don't know a ton of what he thought about life, but given the fact that he was a young guy in a leadership position and helping pioneer the early Christian church, we can assume that he felt power, pressure, and possibility just like we do. Thankfully, he had an incredible mentor in his life named Paul. Paul is one of the most influential people who ever lived and the person who wrote most of the second part of the Bible called the New Testament. That's what's so cool, is that Paul actually took the time to write words of encouragement and advice to Timothy. And we get to read those letters because they are a part of the Bible. They're called First and Second Timothy. There's one part of the letter that I'd imagine meant so much to Timothy, and it can have a big impact on us today. Check out what Paul wrote to his young friend, Timothy. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Put yourself in young Timothy's shoes. It was his job to tell the older people in the church that they couldn't do certain things. It was his job to tell people with much more life experiences what choices were wise and what choices were not. Oh, and imagine the expectations people had of Timothy. There totally could have been people who were just watching his every move, just waiting for him to prove that he was too young for his leadership role. How would you feel in that position? And Paul, the top dog leader of the day, writes to Timothy and basically says, hey, don't let other people expect less of you. Don't let other people look down on you. Don't let anyone set the bar too low for your life. Instead, Paul tells Timothy to be an example for other people. Lead the way in all sorts of important areas. Set a high bar for yourself. Paul saw the potential and power in young Timothy's example. Paul told Timothy to set an example in the way he talked, in the way he behaved, in the way he loved others, in his way of trusting God and in living with healthy boundaries. All of these examples had something in common. They show us that Paul saw something in Timothy. And in Paul's second letter to Timothy, he explains a bit of what he saw. Look at what Paul wrote. I am reminded of your sincere faith, 
which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. See, Paul recognized that Timothy had great examples of faith in his life, like his mom and his grandmother, but that Timothy also had a genuine faith of his own. See, whether he was being underestimated by others or overwhelmed by misplaced pressure, Timothy understood that his faith was something only he could own. Yes, it may have started as a copy of what he was taught from his mom and grandma, but eventually it became his own. This kind of ownership changed his life. He didn't have to pay attention to the pressures that other people were putting on him because he had a faith of his own and he owned his faith, meaning he took his faith personally and took steps to strengthen it. And this can be your story too. There's a chance that when it comes to faith, up until this point, you've either felt underestimated or overwhelmed. You've felt the pressure that other people have put on you in ways that have caused faith to either feel too basic or too much to handle. Either way, we learn from the words of Paul and example of Timothy that you can own your faith. You aren't meant to let the pressure nor the lack of expectation from other people define the way you relate to God. Just like when young people don't wait for permission to change the world, you don't have to wait for permission to make your faith your own. You can follow the example of Jesus, do the things he did, and become more like him regardless of whether or not you feel underestimated or overwhelmed right now. Here's what this looks like. If you're feeling underestimated when it comes to your faith journey, here are a few steps you can take to own your own faith. First, explore what you believe. This means you should ask the questions you've always had. You should think for yourself and not just take my word or anyone else's word for it when it comes to your faith. People like your small group leader and me are here to help you, but we're not able to own your faith for you. Next, move to an everyday faith. And here's what I mean. It's easy to get in the habit of a Sunday only faith. We know we're supposed to show up at church, sing the songs, go through the motions, but that's just it, right? And that's a great place for your faith journey to start, but it is not meant to be the only part of your faith journey. Every day, we get the chance to set an example for other people in how we talk, the way we act, the way we treat one another, and in how we connect with God. Maybe your start to an everyday faith could look like spending time with God daily. Next, another thing you might try is to invite others in. Explore with other people. Ask your small group leader for resources to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus. Ask them your questions. You can always try to figure them out together. Choose to go on the journey to build a faith of your own, not one that's just based off of what other people in your life believe or tell you to believe. Now, for those of you who are feeling overwhelmed, here's the one thing I want you to remember to do. Check your pressure. Remember this with the gauge, it shows you how much you can take before you pop, right? See, here's something that Jesus said. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. See, this is what faith is supposed to feel like. It's not always easy, but it's also not supposed to feel like constant pressure. If you're feeling too much pressure, just relax. God's opinion of you isn't based on anything you're being asked to do. Jesus invites you to rest. Now, if you're feeling underestimated, talk to your small group leader and ask for help finding ways to maximize your potential. See, following Jesus is an invitation to possibility, not pressure. If it feels like possibility, then you're probably on the right track. So as you live out all that it is to being young, don't forget that you can own your own faith. During these years of your life, you have the opportunity to set the tone for the rest of your years with the way you practice your faith. Imagine if your journey with Jesus wasn't based off someone else's basic expectations or someone else's enormous amount of pressure to perform. Faith isn't always easy, but following Jesus is full of possibility. Imagine if as a high schooler, you begin to own your own faith and experience the full life that Jesus promised. One day, you won't be young. So 
Don't forget the unique opportunity of this moment. Don't forget the power, the possibility, and the option to set the bar high. Don't forget what that feels like. When you head to small groups, think about this question. When it comes to faith, have you felt underestimated or overwhelmed? Well, listen, it's good karma again. I want to thank you for hanging with us on today. And hopefully you were encouraged and are now motivated to use this time in your life to personally build your faith or own your faith, as Leslie mentioned. It is our goal to help you along this journey and also provide you with resources that you can use. And so with that being said, I encourage you uh, to add the only the young plan on the Bible app and spend the next 21 days retreating and communing with God and allow his word to speak life to you and fuel your faith. But before we go, let's take a moment to pray. Lord God, we thank you just for this opportunity that we've come together, God, to grow in your word. I thank you, God, for the word that has come to empower our young people, God, how they can really, really own their own faith, even in their youth, Lord. I thank you that as the scripture said, let no man despise thy youth. Let no man look down on them because they are young. I thank you, God, that they would take opportunities even in their youth while they don't have as many distractions as perhaps an adult does with working a full-time job, spouses and kids and all those other things to worry about. Thank you, God, that they would utilize this time, God, to spend with you, to get to know you. Even those hard questions that they may have concerning their faith, I thank you, God, that as they spend time in your word, word, also thank you that you would connect them, God, with uh, people in their life that can help uh, them develop in their walk with you, that can help lead them and guide them in the right direction, whether it be a mentor, whether it be a Sunday school teacher, a youth leader, God, a teacher, a coach, God. We thank you, God, for positive influences in the lives of our young people that will encourage them in their walk with you. But God, I thank you, God, that you would just always allow them to have an encounter with you where they know that you are real, they know that you're on their side, and they know that you're rooting for them, Lord. We give your name all honor and glory because you are worthy. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Well, again, young people, we want to thank you for hanging with us, and we'll see you next week. Same station, same channel. God bless you. Thank you.